Hi, and welcome to another Student Med video, and today we're going to be discussing hyperparathyroidism. To understand hyperparathyroidism, we must first learn the normal functioning of the parathyroid axis. There are four parathyroid glands, and they are located in the corners of the thyroid gland, which is found in the neck. Low serum calcium levels activate chief cells inside the parathyroid gland to release parathyroid hormone. Once released, the parathyroid hormone has effects in the kidneys and the bones. PTH increases osteoclast activity and so liberates calcium from the bone into the blood. In the kidney, PTH has two effects. Not only does it stimulate greater reabsorption of calcium from the filtrate, but it also upregulates the activity of 1-alpha-hydroxylase, an enzyme that is responsible for the formation of active vitamin D which is called calcitriol. Vitamin D functions to increase the absorption of calcium from the gut. All of these factors together raise serum calcium levels. The elevated calcium levels provide negative feedback to the parathyroid gland and so inhibit the release of parathyroid hormone. In hyperparathyroidism, there is dysregulation to this normal pathway and too much parathyroid hormone is released from the parathyroid glands. Hyperparathyroidism can be divided into either primary, secondary or tertiary. In primary hyperparathyroidism, there is uncontrolled release of parathyroid hormone from chief cells. This leads to the development of hypercalcemia, which is defined clinically as a calcium level above 2.6 millimoles per litre. This is usually caused by a benign tumour of a single parathyroid gland, which is called a parathyroid adenoma. However, it is sometimes caused by a malignancy, which is called parathyroid carcinoma. A parathyroid adenoma can be treated pharmacologically through the use of sinocalcet, which is a calcium emetic. This means it mimics the actions of calcium and therefore inhibits the release of parathyroid hormone from chief cells. A parathyroidectomy, which is removal of one of the parathyroid glands, may be indicated if there's a malignancy or if the PTH levels are dramatically elevated. Secondary hyperparathyroidism is caused by chronic kidney disease. In CKD, the kidneys produce less vitamin D. This consequently means less calcium is absorbed from the gut, which leads to hypocalcemia. As a result, the parathyroid tries to correct the low calcium levels by increasing parathyroid hormone release. Over time, the parathyroid gland adapts to having to release more PTH by undergoing hyperplasia. Serum calcium levels in patients with secondary hyperparathyroidism will either be low or normal, and this is because the parathyroid glands are fighting an uphill battle in attempting to restore serum calcium levels, as there is an ever-worsening vitamin D deficiency in CKD. As a result, secondary hyperparathyroidism is managed by correcting the vitamin D deficiency and, if necessary, begin a course of sinocalcet. If patients are in end-stage renal failure, which is a glomerular filtration rate of less than 15, they will also require dialysis. If you'd like to find out more about chronic kidney disease, then check out my other videos linked in the description. Tertiary hyperparathyroidism is where baseline levels of parathyroid hormone remain inappropriately high after successful treatment of secondary hyperparathyroidism, and this leads to hypercalcemia. This inappropriate elevation of PTH occurs as during secondary hyperparathyroidism there is hyperplasia of the parathyroid glands. After treating the secondary hyperparathyroidism through either replacing the vitamin D or commencing dialysis treatment, the parathyroid glands should begin to reduce down in size and therefore release less parathyroid hormone. However, in some patients, the parathyroid does not reduce in size and therefore it releases more parathyroid hormone at baseline. This leads to hypercalcemia. Tertiary hyperparathyroidism can be treated surgically by removing the offending parathyroid gland. Let's take a look back at the similarities and differences between primary, secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism. As we can see, primary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism both result in hypercalcemia. 
If we remember, hypercalcemia is where calcium levels are above 2.6 millimoles per litre. And the symptoms of hypercalcemia can be easily remembered through the phrase stones, bones, groans and moans, which stand for kidney stones, painful bones, abdominal groans, which means constipation or nausea and vomiting, and psychiatric moans, which refers to either depression or psychosis. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have found this video helpful. If you have, a like would always be appreciated as it helps my channel grow and reach more people. And if you're interested in any other videos, then see down in the description below where I've linked a few more.